Okay. I would love to have a discussion about a game that I used to spend thousands, probably, at least hundreds of hours playing as a child. So a lot of people, a lot of people my age have played a lot of in-browser MMOs from like the year 2000 to about 2012, maybe as late as 2015 to 18, but really they were at the height of the popularity around like 2004 to 2010, right? This was um, how a lot of people who are older Gen Z to younger millennial would spend all of their time. <laughs> like personally, I remember every single computer I could ever access as a kid, I would just spend all my time playing games. And so if it wasn't like a pre-loaded video game on the school computer, it was something like Habbo Hotel. <laughs> I used to play so much Habbo Hotel. To the point where to this day when I play a video game, I can't help but compare it like subconsciously to um, my Habo experience. Or if I'm not com comparing a game that I'm actively playing to Habo, I'm like thinking about games in relation to Habo. So the question is, why is that? Why Why am I constantly searching to fill this hole that Habo Hotel has left in my, in my, in my life, to be honest? It's, what did I actually do in Habo Hotel? Well, Habo Hotel, just for some background, was a in-browser MMO that started in, I think, like 2003, and it's actually still open to this day as of 2022. It's not nearly as popular as it was in, say, 2012 when I was still playing it, but it you can still play it. These things that I'm gonna talk about still exist today. Um, but the game has had a lot of controversy uh, <laughs> throughout the course of its run because it's actually geared towards like a slightly older demographic than say Club Penguin was, which was clearly for kids, right? To the point when you're selecting your age, if you're over 18 and you're playing Club Penguin, they like mocked you like you're some elderly fart playing a kid's game, like what's your problem? But nonetheless, Habo actually set a rule that you had to be over 14 or 16 or something to play it. I was like eight, so definitely nobody was double checking. <laughs> I remember even they would have moderators come in um, if you were in like a public room and like side, like it was called whispering instead of DMing. Well, they have DMing, but in the room they would whisper to you like, hey, how old are you? And stuff. And so if you were honest and you're like, I'm 11, they would ban you. Um, but if you were even a little wise, you'd be like, oh, I'm 18 or something and you were and you were like five that's what I did anyway I was definitely like way too young to be playing this game um I remember being like hardly literate which comes into play when I'm going to talk about what I actually did <laughs> in Hobo Hotel because there were all sorts of things you could do right there was um role playing was a really big one but like not well I guess maybe like role play like a freak shit kind of modern role play like furries and adopt me and stuff on Roblox but what I remembered engaging in was that they had um, clubs, like you could go role play that you were in like a nightclub. I remember the really popular one was the, it was like 18 plus gay, gay lesbian bi room. I was like, what do these words mean? <laughs> like I kind of knew what gay was, but I didn't know what the other things were. So I'd just go in because it was a popular room and I'd get hit on by women when I was like wearing women's clothes or I would be like, huh? I was eight. I was like, this is inappropriate but a little enticing. Hey, be who you are for your pride. But anyway, that's not what I mainly, that was like probably the thing that I did the least was just casual like nightclub role play, even though that was definitely a big thing. Um, there were like furniture sellers. There was like a big ferny is what they called it, culture of like trying to buy and acquire rare furniture items. Um, I used to like prostitute myself <laughs> in game. Once again, I was like between the ages of like eight to 12. I like prostitute myself in game. Um, like role play, I'm like legitimately role play sex acts as like an eight year old. Um, and I had no clue what was going on. I just wanted a sofa. <laughs> I remember getting banned. I think I actually actively got banned. If not on Habo itself, I think it was on Habo itself, but I used to also play spin off Habo hotel things. Which is a whole other thing, like people who would make their own like private Club Penguin servers, the same thing existed with Habo, like they'd have private Habo servers, um, where you usually get you like unlimited membership and furniture type stuff. But I think in Habo I got actively banned for 24 hours and it was devastating because I couldn't read. They did it in like military time. Like you're banned from um, this 
time slot of like hour minute second until this time slot of hour minute second and i remember being so young that i was like i don't even understand what these numbers mean like does this mean i'm banned for a year or a day I, I have no clue but i definitely got banned for a day for performing inappropriate things in chat right to try and get a sofa and i was legitimately like eight well at that point i think i was like 10 or 11 but anyway this is not even the main thing that I was doing. That you could also play games with the hope of getting um, money, furniture, whatever. But it wasn't like Club Penguin where the developers had pre-made a game. It was all community built and community based. Like everybody had their own rooms where they could set up whatever they wanted basically. So some people would set up like uh, falling furniture where you have to try and get to, it's like musical chairs basically. Like you have to try and fill up all the seats before everyone else. And if you don't get a seat, you're kicked out. Or um, there were like fashion competitions where you had to try and quickly dress up to a theme as best as you could and you'd be eliminated if you were bad. Uh, but that one was unfair because if you didn't have the club, like, I forgot what it's called, Hobo Club, then you would only get a really limited quantity of clothing. So that was, like, not fair if you didn't have that. <laughs> um, generally, you looked quite slobbish and you had no clout unless you had Hobo Club because your outfits were so much cooler with Hobo Club. I think what they ended up doing way later was that they had a system set up where you could get a subscription with a there's like a finite amount of furniture you could build with the subscription but it wasn't a lot and you couldn't really build anything substantial with it um but this was like later in the time span of me playing it like i didn't ever play it with that i think um but they definitely still had the hobo club membership which i had of course <laughs> i was also one of the bourgeoisie kids who had a club penguin membership when i was younger but only for like limited time span. My, my parents never set up a credit card with it. They got me like gift cards that you could buy at Toys R Us. Um, anyway, I remember being so desperate for Habo Club that I would take my prepaid cell phone, like flip phone in the year like 2010 and you can text Habo directly and deplete funds from your cell phone balance, your prepaid cell phone balance and use that to buy in-game currency at Habo Hotel. That's how, <laughs> that's how committed I was to the bit, right? I'd like beg my parents and when they wouldn't, I'd just text the phone number. It was like a whole problem. But this still isn't what I did, right? The biggest thing that I did was I was part of this agency. And so yes, there were casinos and gambling and all that stuff, but I didn't understand how that worked because I was, so little I didn't I couldn't even participate in casinos at all but I understood agencies which is basically like a day job um, under the guise of joining like a military basically like a hubbo military or some sort of thing like they were also ones that were themed on banks and um, like international security agencies basically <laughs> um, you would join one and essentially it was what would now be considered like an MLM or a Ponzi scheme where you go in and you join and your only task is to recruit more members. So it's like a forever growing sort of thing. And the premise was that you were low key promised that you would get paid in game for this stuff. But I have never, I'd like, I literally played for hundreds, if not thousands of hours in this agency and never once saw any in game currency. I did it because I enjoy being part of cults <laughs> or I, I guess I've always enjoyed that, even as a little kid, even though I didn't understand that that's what was going on. I was just like, ooh, I'm role playing like I have a fun little day job, but not even role playing. I like legitimately believe that I was part of this agency. Um, like I had a lot of loyalty to the agency that I worked for, for some reason, because it was like, this is something I'm part of. Like I thought I was like really part of this community and this entity. And look, I was like, you work there for hundreds of hours, you get to know people. Um, but once again, I was a child, so I don't really remember any of these people and I've had no contact with any of these people because I had no other social media outlets because I was like eight or 10. I have to keep reiterating this because it's literally been like, what, 12 years now since I was probably actively engaging in this game, but I just remember the feeling of it so vividly. And so how this would work is you, when you first joined, you'd walk up to 
whatever the recruiting station is, right? And so there were usually, there was like a row of people whose whole job was to try and recruit incoming candidates. And because the, the MMO was so popular at that time, there was always a stream of people who were interested and wanted to join. And these rooms were always like popping and had a lot of people in them. So people always wanted to be recruited, right? So there was a constant supply of people who wanted to join and then people who wanted to be promoted who were helping these people join. So you had to follow a process of like, well, it depends on each one. But for the one that I joined, it was, you had to change your motto, change your outfit, and then join the forum or whatever, and have the badge be displayed on your in-game like profile. Um, and then once you do that, you go in as a recruit, right? And so you have in your like motto is what it's called in Habo, it's like your personal bio, basically. You have, just like recruit and the name of the agency at the beginning and then once you are recruited in and you're ready to go and you have to make sure you're following all these rules at all points during this process otherwise they like halt it and they tell you it's like it's like military level discipline like that's the joke i guess is that's what you're what you're role playing to be a part of but i was like oh my god i should take notes or something for this uh recruiting lesson because you had to go in and in order to go through every stage of promotion really like every major stage you needed a training um like you had your initial training that made you from a recruit to a cadet or something like that and then you change your motto every time you have a promotion right and then after you have like name of agency um title you also had like in brackets different letters that would symbolize your level of education <laughs> like you would have um F for field training, which is a separate class that's only ever offered whenever they had like a qualified teacher over there to teach the class. And you would have to engage the class and they'd quiz you during the class and you'd have to uh, memorize what they teach you. And uh, a lot of it was actually stuff like uh, the headquarters etiquette. So if they put in chat, if somebody who was like a higher rank than you put in chat like um, FTF, that meant fill the front. If anybody's ever done this you'll know like immediately what i'm talking about like in these agencies or um ftb fill the back or attention and you'd have to like stand to attention and like wave in in like hobo you they have like a wave command that's kind of iconic like this jittery hand um and that always stressed me out because i like couldn't get to the emote fast enough so i thought i'd get in trouble or something um and usually when you stand to attention that's when you'd get promoted if you were working because you had to actually sit there and put in the hours like once you became recruited it was now your job to recruit others so you had to follow strict rules and there were always like vip people just chilling who were allowed to wear whatever they want and the, they had these like obnoxiously high ranks. Later on I found out that most of them actually just paid <laughs> paid to be promoted. Like you could pay for a rank, but I never had any money really, so I could never afford or even think of that. Um, and I remember just like spending hours and hours just recruiting people in this, in this headquarters for the chance at a promotion, right? Um, and then finally, once you get promoted enough, there's like a base level of promotion. It's like 10, 12 promotions. And it's totally arbitrary. It's whenever somebody who is a higher rank than you would walk up and be like, I've noticed you're working very hard there, you little hobo you. Um, I'm going to promote you. Please change your motto to this. And I'm like, ah, you know, it was like so exciting whenever it happened. And when it happened to somebody else next to you, you're like, oh my God, God, I wish that were me. It was funny too, because in the HQ, it was so... It was so detailed, like clearly the owner had so much money to burn <laughs> with this agency because obviously people were paying to be promoted, but I didn't know that. Um, or just donating to it because they had they enjoyed the community or maybe just because they were adults and they knew that this is how you get people to join, right? Because <laughs> they'd spend their real world, real world, like what, 20, 30 bucks. I don't, I, mean, I have no concept for how the gold worked back then because once again, I was a child, so everything seemed expensive but they would like just set up these elaborate HQs where you'd go and um, you only had access to so many places depending on rank, right? But they had a break room where you could just go chill and hang out. <laughs> um, or I remember one time in my entire time working there, working there, yeah, that's how I viewed it. I remember I was a higher rank by then. So I had already specialized after the original 10, 12 ranks or whatever. You can apply to specialize into other different departments. I became a teaching specialist which was ironic because i 
was barely literate. Like I applied three separate times um, because I couldn't write an essay. Cause you had to actually physically write an application essay in the forums in order to be promoted. But I was once again, a child. And even as an adult, I'm like basically functionally dyslexic. So I, it's difficult, but as a child, it was, I, I couldn't even comprehend what I was supposed to be writing in these things. Um, but finally, after a third attempt, I was able to be accepted into a promotion. And so once you become specialized, you're like a slightly, slightly more clout <laughs> sort of thing. And so I was able to teach other recruits. And at some point I was just there at the right time on like some random Sunday when I would play for 12 hours straight when they had the owner come in and do the, this like trial. And I remember it so vividly to this day because it had never happened again or prior where where I was around anywhere, where you could be part of a jury just because you were there of this member who had done something wrong and it was so dire and he was so high up that the owner had to put on a actual trial in this secret trial room that already existed. It was like so crazy to me to be part of that. Um, and it, it was one of those moments where it felt like it was totally worth it to be spending hundreds of hours with this agency despite never getting paid because I wasn't really there for the money because I was a kid. Um, but just to be like part of this community, that was like, whoa, I can't believe this is something I get to, I get to be a part of. But then there were other um, aspects to it. Like I had friends who were also teachers who I met like as a recruit who had like specialized with me and gone up the ladder. Um, or there were like rival agencies, right? So they'd come in and try to raid you, but you couldn't do anything because there was no combat in Habo. Habo is not like a PvP game. There's no combat at all. It's just social mechanics. So people would come in and like just spam chat essentially <laughs> and like try and take over the space with their presence. And there were like rules like no effects in the lobby, no whatever in the lobby because it's not professional. professional. Like you're not allowed to shout if you don't have a certain rank or whatever. And so to, for them to come in and uh, like apply effects and shout and do all this stuff, everybody was like, <gasps> like, this is horrible, <laughs> you know, like a rival, a rival faction. At the time, it was one of the biggest ones that there was. Um, so it was like a major, like, I felt like this was such a shocking thing for somebody to attempt to do. And of course, now as an adult, once again, this is a children's game. <laughs> where there are like no real consequences <laughs> but as a kid i was like this is so disrespectful um, and so it was basically that that's what i would do all day is go to the front of this building in this game and just try to recruit other people into my company and hope that i'd be acknowledged essentially for hours and hours and hours and it was like an office job especially that whole filing paperwork and knowing the rules and having to take advanced training and stuff like that has to this day really filled me with this need to be part of a corporation or something like uh, the desire to be part of like a cult but like also an office job so i'm kind of in this weird horrible gray area but also a lot of games i search for nowadays are like looking for everyday monotony like i'm really interested in everyday monotony in video games because of these hundreds of hours that i've spent specifically in haba hotel and this is also on top of like hundreds of other hours I spent in other games, right? Like Club Penguin, I spent a lot of time in, it was very invested in, but Habo Hotel was one where I felt like I had found something that was like this amazing niche. Like it felt so productive compared to the other games because I was rising the ranks of a, of a corporate entity essentially. And I feel like I have never met anybody else in the real world or anywhere else that has ever engaged in this. To the, to the degree that I did anyway. Like there's plenty of people who join these agencies and then they were like, well, what's the point of this? So they would just leave or not care. But I've never met somebody who was like a high ranking officer. And in the end, I, I became a pretty mid tier, that's pretty high level um, teacher in this, in this agency. What ended up finishing the whole experience for me is that some guy came into the, the headquarters at some point and was like advertising something. And I was like, huh? But the way he did it was compelling. And once again, I was like 11, 10, eight, whatever, who cares? And so I clicked on the link, which was where I ended just, that was the stupidest thing ever. But I um, clicked on the link and then it took me to the Habo homepage, which, or so I thought. I didn't pay attention to the link, but it looked exactly like the Habo homepage. And I was like, did he just log me out with this link? That's so weird. So I logged back in. 
Uh, clearly I had been scammed and <laughs> he stole my account and everything I had built up over the years overnight. And it was so upsetting and I couldn't articulate to customer support, right? Um, he had like locked me out of my account and I couldn't figure out how to talk to customer support because I was a child. So I just lost everything and I shed tears and I sobbed and I was crying. And that was the end of my Habo career. It has never been the same since then. But that taught me honestly the most valuable lesson ever about like internet security <laughs> was because of the devastation I felt losing that account that had like no, like literally probably thousands of hours um, of my life into it at that point. And of course, once again, I was very young still, so it wasn't the end of the world, but it really felt like it in that moment. So. I would like to add an addendum to the end of this video. Um, upon doing research, I see that Habo Hotel has become a major um, proponent of NFT and integration into their game, and I think that is scummy and horrible. So actually this game is dead to me in many ways. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I would like to put out a cry for help. If anybody knows of any games that have um, like basically office job vibes, right? Where you have to promote in ranks through like actual menial work and through paperwork and stuff, please tell me. In, in like an MMO setting, not like papers please or whatever. Like I want it to be a player driven corporation or a cult please tell me if you know of one of these uh, because I still have not found a game like that all these years later um, okay that's that's it thank you um, 